Uh, yes, take a mem to uh, Mr. Walsh and mark it personal. My dear Lester, enclose fine check for $360, covering quarterly interest payment. Regret it had to be a few days late, but I'm sure you will understand. Type that and make out a check. Busy? No, no, come on in. <laughs> How are you, Eleanor? Very well, thanks. Just came to town on a little business. Thought I'd drop up to say hello, Tom. <laughs> Have a cigar? I uh, know, thanks, Sam. I'll smoke my pipe. Well, how is everything? People still building houses? Yep. I got a big job coming up. New Christian Tabernacle. Oh, doing business with the Reverend Steady Company. Steady Company? <laughs> well, what have you two been calling it for the last 12 years? Well, you see, Addie just give in. But I'm still hoping to take her away from you and the kids someday, Tom. Well, good luck, <laughs> Sam. But it'll be sort of odd for us to get along without it. Your family's grown now. Trouble and worries all over. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, of course. Excuse me, Mr. Shillam. A telegram from New York. Collect 72 cents. Collect? <laughs> Must be from Ken. Well, I thought that's who it was from. It is. <laughs> He's coming home. Oh, really? Is there an answer? Well, what would you suggest? Oh, I mean for the messenger boy. Oh, well, why not pay him? <laughs> <laughs> Has Ken quit his job with that firm of New York architects? No, he doesn't say so. Oh, they think a lot of Ken. He's a lad with new ideas. You know, I always hoped he'd go in business with me someday. But I guess I wouldn't have much to offer him. Well, coming up to the house tonight? Yeah. I haven't forgotten this is your wedding anniversary. It would have been your 26th year. And he asked me for dinner. Fine. We'll have a regular family gathering. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Sam. So long, Tom. Bye, Alma. Check and memo to Mr. Walsh. We we'll let this go for the time being. We're can't hang here long, Mr. Sheridan. Long or short, we'll make the most of it, won't we, Elmer? Well, I thought perhaps he might be coming back here to go into business for himself. Then I'd have to look for a new secretary, wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm going over to the telegraph office. I'll be right back. See who that is, please. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Addie, he's right here. Hello, sis? Thomas, this is the last straw. I never heard of anything so preposterous in all my life. There's an expressman here and he wants $14.75. What for? What for? Two packages, as big as a house, and they must weigh a ton. Well, now, who would they be from when they're sent to let? Kenneth. Oh, oh, yes. I just got a wire. He's coming home. Yes. Well, better pay the man, Addie. Why use your house money? Now, Addie, you know I'll pay you back. Well, why hasn't Ken got the decency to pay his own bills? Well, I'll tell him. Yes, I will. I'll tell him. As soon as I set eyes on him. Goodbye. Here. I wish you'd drop those things in the river instead of bringing them here. Hi, Aunt Addie. 
Get a lot of these mallards. Two drakes in the hand. Would have got more, but they were flying too high. Where'd you get them? Up at Anderson's Pond. Mmm, nice and fat, too. I'll say. I'll get out, get out. I'll be up there next Saturday. Here's the kind of a gun to get them with. A 16-gauge pump. Stop shaking those things around. They're leaking all over the steps. I'll go put them in the icebox. What? You're not going to take those nasty, messy things in this house. Oh, gee, Aunt Eddie, I haven't got time to clean them now. I got a couple fellas to Brookville for the game. Well, I'll take them around to the garage and I'll get you some lunch. Hey, Aunt Eddie. Look at my new gun. It's a honey. What, another? Haven't you enough already? Where'd you get it? I bought it. Twenty-seven fifty. Twenty-seven fifty. Does your father know anything about it? He will. I charged it. Charged it. Lauren Sheridan, do you know? Don't point that thing at me. Oh, that's all right, Aunt Addie. It isn't loaded. Boy, what a balance! Just like holding a feather. You can't even feel a trigger when you touch it. It wasn't loaded. That's what they always say. You might as well shoot me as to scare me to death. Oh, well, gee, Aunt Addie, I didn't think it You probably murdered somebody. Give me this gun. That's the best shot I ever saw, lady. You brought them down with a duck strap right on them. Take those things away. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, the three pair of shoes for Miss Carol Sheridan. Mm. Thank you. More new shoes. Charge, charge, charge. It's all they do around this place. Hello, is this the service garage? This is Larry Sheridan. Say, get me out a 19475 tire from a sliver. I'll pick it up later. Yeah, charge it to Tommy Sheridan Continental Construction Company. Okay, thanks. Charge it. That's all you children know. Where do you think your father gets his money? Well, that's a cinch, Aunt Addie. From the construction company. Lawrence? How often have I told you not to leave your clothes lying around? Okay. Now here, take this. Before I do some shooting. I wanted to explain to you about the interest. I was going to send the check up to your office, but something else came up. Well, you can let the interest money ride for a while, Tom. I know that taking care of the children must leave you pretty short at times. I wish there was some way I could help. Oh, thanks, Lester. We're getting a long time. Well, don't forget, Tom, I'm pretty fond of those kids, too. Naturally, being my sister's children, I would be fond of them. I think I have a chance to do something for them. Through you. How do you mean? Let me ask you a couple of questions first. As an engineer, what should you say was the difference between a first-grade waterproof cement and common grade? Better lasting quality? Greater resistance to moisture. Yes. Yeah. But the common grade would be entirely satisfactory and adequate, wouldn't it, for a job like the new city hospital? Mm, very likely. But the specifications call... Yes, 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 I know. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I've bought in on that cement contract with Snyder. I didn't know that, Lester. Well, you have your worries running a big family. I have mine running a big company. You know, Tom, if we were to use the common grade cement on the new hospital job, it would mean an extra hundred thousand dollars to us. That money shouldn't be wasted. Perhaps not. But I'm responsible to the city for living up to those specifications. Yes, that's all been taken into consideration. Cook, who is the city engineer, as you know, has agreed to leave the matter entirely in your hands. Do you realize what you're asking of me, Lester? All depends on how you look at your job. I know that you give me value received for every dollar of salary I pay you. But I've told you that I'd like to do something more for you and for the children. You've got to consider them. Or you're getting further in debt all the time. You can't even keep up the mortgage on your home. Is that a warning, Lester? I'd hate to waste $100,000, Tom. I'd much rather make your children a present for the clear deed for their home. Better give it some thought. I'll stop by your place tomorrow and have a little visit with the kids.
It's almost noon, Mr. Sheridan. Is there anything else? <clears throat> yes. Bring me the specifications on the new city hospital. Then you may go. Yes. Close the door quickly, Jim, before we freeze. Aunt Addie doesn't believe in unnecessary fires. Well, I hope there's a loud light in the fireplace. That's half the fun I have in coming here, Carol. Can I claim the other half, Mr. Martin? The best half, Miss Sheridan. Says you. <laughs> Run into the living room like a goodie. I'll be right with you. Aunt Addie? Aunt Addie? Well? Did my shoes come? Yes. Three pair. Charged. That's right. Well, in my opinion, it isn't. You've got more shoes now than a centipede could use. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Seeing pictures in the flames? You know, make-believe ones? Sure. A home like this and a real family. Well, you can have the house, but you'll have to supply your own family. Oh, can I have you with the house? And I'm so fond of housekeeping. <laughs> Look, there's a castle with a tower and maybe a dragon, too. Can you see it? I see the same old thing. A home and someone to share it. I thought I had it once, but it didn't work out that way. But now I'm beginning to see the picture clear again. And you're part of it. Don't, Jim. Don't spoil it. Remember your promise. We were just to be pals. I'm sorry. Oh, Jim, I... What? We mustn't. Oh, nothing. Go on, get out of here, will you? How do you ever expect me to get dressed? Shall I call for you? No, I'll take a taxi to your place. Cocktail? Tempter. Don't, Jim. Oh, all right. Now get out, will you, or I will be late. I'll expect you 6.30. Get out. So long. Uh-oh. I saw it. I saw you kiss him. Oh, that was... Carol, I... now the time has come when... There are certain things that a young girl must be told. Why? What is it? That's it. You're innocent. You don't realize it. A man could so easily take advantage of you. Oh, Aunt Daddy, do you think a man would? Well, a married man doesn't run after a young girl for any good. And Jim Martin is a married man. Just a moment, Aunt Daddy. This is different, believe it or not. Jim and his wife have been separated for years. He does everything he can for her. Everything, indeed. She's a hopeless invalid. And he... Why is she an invalid? Because she was in an automobile wreck while she was chasing around with another man. She made a fool of Jim. He could have divorced her then, but he was too decent. Carol, are you really in love with him? I don't know. Oh, Carol, you mustn't think of such a thing. There are some things that we must deny ourselves. Even though it hurts. Okay, thanks for the lift, guys. I'll see you later. Hi, why did we trim him? 33 to nothing. Sweeney went 86 yards for a touchdown. If that guy doesn't make the All-American... Say, what am I doing, talking to myself? Lawrence, hang up your coat. Okay, toots. Toots? A very idea. Hey, Carol, I saw your truck driver boyfriend going down the street. Don't you dare call Jim that. Well, even if he is worth a lot of dough, he's still a truck driver to me. With two pins, I'd beat your ears at you. What do you see, Aunt Addie? That Martin guy's making a roughneck out of her. Now stop it. Stop it, both of you. You hear me? I'll show you. Now you stop it. You hear me? God, dear. Uh, 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 oh, Pop. Hello, Dad. Hello, Dad. Hey, did you hear the score? Yeah. Hey, you poor dear. You're cold as a bicycle. 33 to a goose egg. Fine. What? Is there a fire in the living room? Who lighted it? Hey, Pop. I got a new tire for my bus. Yeah? yeah. Nice 
I say, my man, uh, bring the luggage in, will you? Yes, sir. All I need now is a new evening wrap, Dad. Yes. And I saw the lovely Hey, place. there's a taxi out in front. You got company. Who is it? Find George. It's Ken. I forgot to tell you. The prodigal son. The son of a gun. Oh, Ken, I'm all fine. Oh. Oh. The royal duke himself. Easy, old girl, easy. Laddie, control yourself. Kim, Kim, how are you? Topping, Peter, never more fit. Uh, driver, just leave the luggage there, will you? One dollar and six bits. Uh, Peter, would you take care of this fellow? Hmm? Oh, yes, right. I say, has anything come for me? Yes, fourteen dollars and seventy-five cents for him. Auntie, well, 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 how's the old girl? As usual. Boy, get a load of that neck pennant. Am I glad your tie's fitting me. Over my cold corpse, infant. Kenny, Kenny, tell me, is it real? That's enough of that. So help me, a moss playground. Now get away, get away. <laughs> your hands off me, your hands off me. Stop Don't tugging at me. Don't want to hear Tugging at me, tugging at me. Let me Let wear it a while. Hands off, oh, hands off, I'll suck. <laughs> What goes on here? Dad, Ken has the nicest new piece of sable for his upper lip. Yeah, and it really grows there. Very becoming. Professional man, you know. Well, how's the old town seen, Ken? I can't say that I've noticed any improvement. Ridiculously provincial. Oh, Ken. These people have no architectural sense, Taylor. And some people could use just a little more common sense. And not send packages as heavy as this collect. Well, there they are. That's fine. I picked these up at an auction, Peter. They're genuine, too. The price was ridiculous. I couldn't afford to pass them up. Only two hundred and fifty dollars. Huh? Oh, for the pair. That's why I wired you. What? How much hair do you do? Where we put them? House. That's where you'll all go. Well, I'm glad I saved my money. It'll get me into the Martha Washington home. We could use them for beer mugs. You would think of that. Well, I'm getting dressed. Hey, don't use all the hot water. It's Saturday night, you know. <laughs> Gosh, it's good to see you, Ken. Sit down. Tell me all about it. How are you doing in New York? Oh, that. Yes, yes, I... I've quit, you know. You mean you've left your position? Well, what's the sense in having a talent for architecture if you're not allowed freedom of expression? Yes, of course. Uh, what are you planning to do now? Well, I'd considered spending a couple of years in Europe. I'd sort of like to browse over the cathedral cities. Of course, you know, America really lacks culture. Does it? Oh, obviously. Besides, I need that old world polish. Of Paris, Rome, the Rhine countries. Of course, I I'll have to sort of depend upon you to see me through, Peter. Well, we'll have to give that some thought. Kid. Oh, there's no hurry. I, I won't want to leave before next spring. El Eleanor will be glad to hear that. Eleanor? Yes. Oh, I I'd almost forgotten. What? I wanted to call Beatrice. Beatrice? Yes, Beatrice Manning. Her father's planning to build a new department store. Oh, yes. There's an opportunity there, Ken. Sure, I met them in New York. Uh, I sketched a design I wanted to show Matt. Oh, it's, it's creative. It's imaginative. I'll show it to you later. Fine. It sounds like great stuff. Oh, it is. Well, I've got to get dressed. Oh, Auntie! Yes? Would you have Sarah take this luggage up to my room like a good old thing? Well, you'll have to get used to carrying them up yourself. Sarah's been gone these last three months. What? We have no servant? No. I'll take them up for you, Ken. Wait a minute, Dad. I'll take them. Uh, we'll have to see about getting someone to take Sarah's place. You know, Abby, 
It's nice to have them here. Hmm. Yeah. Sid, will you make some of those cinnamon buns for supper? You know, like Ken likes? I will not. Oh, please, Abby. This is going to be a celebration. Hey, Dad! Oh, Dad! Yes? Can I use your shirt studs tonight? Sure, they're in my... Thanks, I got them. Will you please shut up? How can the person hear? Ah, oh, go put a wave in your mustache, if that's what you call it. Hello, Beatrice. How are you? Kenneth, my darling. When did you arrive? Of course I'm delirious. Papa and I are going out. Why don't you join us? Oh, positively ravishing, darling. I'll expect you. Marvelous. We just like good old New York again. Make us forget this silly little place. Say, Romeo, we'll, we'll... give someone else a chance at that, will you? Yes, dear, yes, I, I, I'm listening. Seven o'clock. Come on, yes. come on. Yeah, come on, give somebody else a chance. Yes, yes, dear, I, I'm going to say it. I... Well, say it. Well, go ahead and say it. Goodbye, my lotus flower. Lotus flower? <laughs> oh, this is too much for my own blood brother. Goodbye, my passion fruit. In one minute it gives murder. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, Jimmy, get away. No more flowers. Yeah, it's enough of the fruit business. I'll knock you right... Yes, uh, send a taxi right away to the Sheridan place on Park Lane. And one more word about that lotus flower from either of you, and I'm going to take I you... I get it. You've gone for a Chinaman. Hello. Hello. Taxi? Sheridan House immediately. That's being a sap. Why don't you have Martin bring around one of his trucks? Oh! Hello, taxi? Yeah, Larry Sheridan. You know where. Too sweet. Awful hard to get anything nice this time of the year. The flowers do seem the right sort of thing for an anniversary. Carnation. Yeah. Martha used to raise them in the garden. Yeah, I remember. Here, you take them into Addie. She'll take care of them. I, I'll help her if she'll let me. Fine. Nick <laughs> will be down in a minute and we'll have supper. Did Ken get home all right? Yes, and he looks uh, topping. Top, top. <laughs> hey, Pop. Yes? Yeah? Let me have a couple of bucks, will you? Yes. Where are you going? The Phi Zeta Delta dance. Tonight? Sure. You didn't think I'd miss it, did you? Right after I've been initiated? <laughs> well, I thought... Oh, Dad! Yes, dear? If anyone calls for me, will you say I just left? Are you all going out? Tonight? A uh, business paper. You know, that matter I spoke about with Manning. I'll be home early. I promise, darling. Right after midnight. Uh, good night, Peter. So long, Pop. Bye-bye, Dad. Everything's set. Are the children ready? What's up, Tom? Huh? Now, Thomas, call those children. Don't let everything spoil. They've gone out. What? You see, Larry had a frat dance. Ken had some business, and Carol had an engagement. Of course. And anything they do is all right with you. Well, there's no use my saying anything. We may as well eat and save what we can. Hey, you and Sam will excuse me. I think I'll go out for a while, too. Without your supper? I'll be back for a bite later. Well, I am hungry. Here, take this food to the kitchen. You don't suppose I'm going to mess up this dining room just for you, do you? Oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs>
Can't you be more careful? What's the matter with you? I feel like an old fool. Andy, washing dishes here with you sort of seems like it was our own home. Washing dishes? You mean breaking them? Just because I'll let you wash dishes, you need to take liberties. When are you going to say yes? Now, you know perfectly well that I can't leave Thomas and the children. Pretty soon they'll be getting homes of their own and you'll be left alone. Well, as long as Thomas has a home, I guess I'll always have a roof over my head. Don't say that, Addie. No. Off that apron, get into your coat. Oh, but Addie. You're going home to it. All right. Well, Count. Sam, I'm sorry I was so long. How about a game of peanuts? Oh, yes, that suits me fine. No, Sam's leaving. I'm taking him with me to church in the morning. I don't want the Reverend Huxley to suspect he's been sitting up half the night playing cards. Well, Yes, I'd better go, Tom. You know that tabernacle, John. Well, I'm not convinced yet, but it would be a sacrilege to have you build a house for the Lord. <laughs> but you promised, that. Well, that's up to the Reverend Huxley. He'll decide that when he meets you here tomorrow afternoon. Here's your hat. Thanks. Good night, Tom. Good night, sir. <laughs> Good night, Andy. Oh, stop it, and go on home. All right. Good night. Good night. Thomas, what's worrying you? Me? I haven't lived in this house all these years without knowing when something's wrong. Now, what is it? <clears throat> I had a talk with Lester Walsh today. Haven't you paid him his interest? Hmm? The interest. Haven't you paid it? There were so many other things this month. Yes, $250 for bronze vases. More money for dresses. New shoes, new tires. Oh, and heaven knows what else. Oh, don't worry, Addie. Everything's gonna be all right. Thomas, I've got to say it. You're letting them grow up selfish, arrogant wasters. They think of no one but themselves. Oh, you're wrong there. Well, deep down in your heart, you know it. They don't appreciate the things you've done for them. Not one of them has a serious thought or ambition. It's all play with them. Ah, what <laughs> jumps the seven, my giant? Shoot the works. I'll take half of it. Okay, any more suckers? All right, hold your toss and I'll take the other half. Okay. Snake eyes! <laughs> hey, let me have another ten, will you? Well, I gave you twenty before. Yeah, but that's not the war debt, and I'm not French. Come on, I'll get some dough for my dad right. in the morning. Oh. <laughs> As I was saying, uh, we can't expect to meet with the proper architectural motive here. America is crude. Stupidly benighted. Uh -huh. That's where I feel that uh, you need a word of advice. Now, in this design I've dashed off for your new emporium, there's a tower reaching skyward. A gigantic new winged figure with arms outstretched. Uh, uh, art extending her bounty to commerce. Uh -huh. There's waiter. Bring me some more cabbage. Oui, monsieur, encore de choux. I said cabbage. Ken, isn't that your sister over there? With that Martin person. Kara, what's the use of avoiding it? You know I'm crazy about you, and you love me. Aren't you forgetting you have someone else to consider? Oh, that's over long ago. She's well provided for. The divorce would mean nothing to her now. We could arrange it quietly in Paris, and when we came back, you'd be my wife. You and me in Paris. It means our happiness, Carol. It's what I've been wanting to say ever since I knew you, and what you've been waiting to hear. Will you go with me? 
Come on, let's dance. Yes, we can go on doing that, I suppose. All they think of is their own pleasure, and you encourage them in every crazy whim. Oh, Thomas, don't you see? They're not bad children, Anne. Perhaps sometimes they're a little thoughtless or extravagant. What I said I thought was for the best. I'm going to bed. Are you going to sit up for them? Oh, I'll just finish my pipe. Well, I'll put out the lights. Save electricity. Good night, sis. Good night. Wake up the whole neighborhood. Larry! Larry, just a minute. Ken's trying to tell me something. Let it go! Let it go! Wait, I'll get you some breakfast. Abby's still at church. Hello? Oh, Jim. How's Grandpappy's long green beard this morning? No, the phone isn't out of order. Too much noise here, I guess. Have you given any thought to what I asked you tonight? Let's take a ride out to the polo game and talk it over. All right. The polo game should be fun. I'll be ready at 1.30. Pick me up. Yes, that's what I'd call it. A pickup. Easy, thou stranger. You'll rouse my southern blood. I'm not in a humorous mood. And when I'm out at night, I don't care to be humiliated by seeing my sister in the company of riffraff. Why, you cheap-minded lame brain. I know where that came from. I saw you there, too, with your lotus flower. That's enough of that. Is it? Do you think you can insult my friends and get away with it? Try to keep me from going anywhere I please with Jim Martin. All right. I warn you, I will. You'd better not try. Come, Ken. Breakfast is waiting. Well, I got that baby fixed. We'll turn up on the carburetor. I'm going to try it out a little later. Larry, will you answer that? I'm not dressed. Oh, we'll take on an evening. Never mind, Larry. I'll answer. Lester. How are you, Tom? You know Cook and Snyder, of course. Yes, of course. Uncle Lester. Well, long time no see. How are you? How's the old boy? Oh, splendid, lad, splendid. How are you, Uncle Lester? How are you? What is this? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I forgot. I might have known it was you. Well, I was glad to see him. Yes, I can see you were. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, uh, I have a little business to discuss with your father. You have your breakfast, Ken. You children run along and get dressed. Let's step in here, gentlemen. 
I want to see you later, Uncle Lester. I want some advice about some spots in Europe. I want to see you too, Uncle Lester. Be careful, Uncle Lester. If he does, it's a touch. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Of course, you realize why we're here, Tom. Yes, let's get the matter settled. I told them of our talk yesterday, and I've assured them that you'd see things in the right light. Sure. You haven't a thing to worry about. The city engineering office will back you up. You're alluding to the new city hospital cement contract. That's it. And we're letting you in on it before we start delivery. Thank you. I am certain, then, that you will deliver according to specifications. I thought you said you could handle them. Now look here, Tom. Yesterday I offered you a practical solution to your difficulties and mine. A purely business proposition. Dollars and cents. It means that to me. But it means much more than that to you. It means your job. I'll tell you right now. Is that your decision, Lester? Well, now, let's not be hasty, Tom. Of course, I could easily get someone else to fill your place. But there's a bond between us. I'm thinking of your family. I'm doing the best I can for all of you. But don't forget, you're living in this house now as the result of my generosity. And you intend using that? Me to use pressure, Tom. I don't want to. It's business. It's the only way I know how to look at it. Well, that's the Well, of all people. I didn't know you had company, Thomas. How are you, Miss Sheridan? Oh. Just a little matter of business. Oh, I don't believe in business on Sunday. Might I ask these gentlemen if they won't no, have... No, 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 thank you. We're just about to leave. Tom, I shall expect to have your definite answer tomorrow morning. Uh, Miss Sheridan, will you tell the kids that I'm sorry, but I had to rush away on business? Oh. Yeah. What did they want? You heard Lester say business. Well, why was Lester threatening you? What gave you that idea? Well, I couldn't help hearing coming in the room. Lester expects me to pass on an inferior grade of cement for the new hospital job. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised at that. He always was a crook. Didn't you tell him so? It's a difficult situation, Eddie. If I could only raise enough to pay Lester that interest. And do you think he'd take it? No. He's got you right where he wants you. He could start foreclosing tomorrow and turn you right in the street. He wouldn't do that. I couldn't let him. This house belongs to the children. It's where they were born. It's all they have. And what can you do about it? It's not what I can do. It's what I must do. Thomas, look at me. If you ever did a thing like that, you never could look anybody in the face again. Not even your own children. Not even if you lost everything you had. Now you go and tell that Walsh and these pack of crooks to go plumb to... Uh, Addie. No. Oh, there must be some other way out. I want to think it over. home. Did you get in this morning? No, I got in last evening. Oh, if I'd known that, I'd have come over last night. Well, you see, I, I, I had a very important business engagement. Oh, Ken, is this some of your work? Oh, it's just a trifle. Well, oh, let me see. Oh, Ken, it's lovely. But what is it? Well, doesn't the design express its motive? Uh, what's that gadget on top there? Gadget? That's art extending her bounty to commerce. Uh, oh, is it a new courthouse? No, it isn't a new courthouse. Oh, I know. It's a mausoleum for the new cemetery. Eleanor, I don't expect you to have any appreciation of art, but for heaven's sakes, refrain from being morbid. Oh, Ken, don't get angry. 
I know I'm stupid about things like that, but, well, I didn't mean it. Eleanor, now let's be frank. I have a feeling in a ridiculous sort of way that I'm up. I don't want to be a cad, but well, you understand. I have a career. Oh, Ken. You mean that you and I are... Well, of course, we'll always be friends, but... Oh, I understand. You mean I'll stand in your way? Oh, now, Eleanor. Oh, it's all right, Ken. I, I was going to see Eddie anyway about a dress I'm making, but... Oh, but I... Oh, I'll come back some other time. Eleanor, please. Hello. Hello, Beatrice, dear. Yes, I'll be there in about a half an hour. Yes, I, I remember. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm going to say it. Goodbye, my, my lotus flower. Now, I've just picked up the papers. Now, what's this you throw here? My plan. Well, you better make some new ones. You'll be needing them. Hey, Ken. Let me have a couple bucks, will you? Take off my overcoat. Ah, oh, don't be a meanie. Take off my overcoat. And Eddie, where's my red purse? I only want it for about an hour. And that's my time. It was in my dresser drawer this morning. Ye gods, what an ad house. I'd rather a menagerie. Well, maybe you'll get your wish. You may not live in this house much longer. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present that well-known crepe hanger, Aunt Addie. Ta-da! Yes, well, she's going to tell you something that you're not used to hearing. The truth. Your father is in trouble. He's about to lose this house and his job, too. What are you talking about? Lose this house? What do you mean, he's going to lose his job? Look here, Aunt Addie, what is this? Just what I told you. I won't take the weight off my feet. Come, children, come sit down. I'll tell you a grim fairy tale. You're all penniless. How long do you suppose money's going to last the way you burn it out? Charge this. Charge that. That's why your father more house. To get more money for you. And now he's up to his neck in debt and can't pay the interest. He mortgaged this house? For $20,000 to your Uncle Lester Walsh. Uncle Lester? Well, that's all right. Why didn't you say so? <gasps> I had a picture of myself selling lead pencils. I'll see Uncle Lester and arrange this matter for Peter. Well, your uncle's arranged it already. He's going to take this house away unless your father passes on rotten cement so that Walsh's company can make a bigger profit on that hospital job. Uncle Lester? What does he think Dad is? Why, Father wouldn't do that. Yes, but all there's left for him to do. He's but, done everything else but that. But that isn't fair, Aunt Addie. It wasn't fair for you children to let him work and scrimp and go without himself to buy you happiness. He let you charge it, and he paid the bills. Well, from now on, you're going to work for it. It'll be happiness. C-O-D. What a swell bunch of mugs we turned out to be. But we didn't know. Ah, uh, we didn't care. You don't suppose Dad would consider that proposition? No, no, of course not. I'll have a talk with Father. For heaven's sake, don't, Ken. Can't you see Dad's fighting right now to keep this from us? Let's do something on our own. Well, there's nothing I would do. Why, this is really very simple. All we have to do is to provide Father with the money for Uncle Lester. Now, uh, did you think that up? All by yourself? You're right, Ken. If we could raise that money, it would solve everything. I know how I can do it. I'll sell my plans to Manning for $20,000. Don't be a sap. Hold out for $100,000. That's the spirit, Ken. But Manning wouldn't give you a check this afternoon. And I know where I can get one right now. Where could you get $20,000? Never you mind. But see Manning anyway. What shall I do? You keep out of it, Lord. Oh, yeah? So you two can grab all the glory? Well, believe you me, if Dad needs dough and there's any of it in this town, I'm going to get it or go to jail trying. You stay here, Carol. Uh, no, no, no. You add Addie and tell her not to say anything to Father.
Oh, you're Ken Sheridan. I'm Jim Martin. Yes, I've had occasion to know who you are. I'm calling for your sister. Oh, no, you're not. I don't understand you. Then I'll try to make it brutally frank. You're not welcome at this house at any time. Is that plain enough? Sure. That's plain enough. Are you going out? Just down to the office. Something I must take care of. Oh, but uh, why don't you let it go till tomorrow? This must be settled now. Where's that? She's in the living room. Oh, hello, Eleanor. Hello, Carol. Oh, I just saw Ken go out and I came back to see Aunt Eddie. Dad's going down to the office. I wish you'd go with him. What? I can't explain now, but find out everything he does and come back and tell me. But I don't... Eleanor! Does Ken know you're here? Uh, Ken's gone out and Eleanor was just saying she has some work to do at the office. Why, hey, this is Sunday. Oh, yes, but, uh... Oh, I have a lot of work I'd like to catch up on, and... And then she can come back with you and stay here for dinner with Ken. Oh, no, I can't. Of course you can. Come along, we'll talk about you and Ken. He's changed his plans, you know. Oh, yes, he told me. Oh, he did. Hello? Oh, Jim. What? I said, I came by the house to pick you up, and your brother Ken met me at the door. He made it very plain to me that I wasn't welcome. Jim, I can't believe it. Well, something's happened, and I guess Ken must have been upset. No, no, it has nothing to do with you. Yes, I want to talk to you about it. I'll be over as soon as I can get there. I'm awfully sorry about what Ken said. Oh, I didn't mind. That isn't going to affect us now. Things have changed, Carol. More than you think. What do you mean? Here's to you and me, in Paris. Then you've decided to go? Yes, I've changed my mind. Carol. Not yet, Jim. There's a string attached to it. I need a lot of money. $20,000, as a matter of fact. What has that to do with it? Oh, Jim, I've got to have it. Is it wanting the money that made you change your mind? I wouldn't have suggested what I did last night. But I thought you were in love with me. And now you're offering to make a deal for money. Is it a bargain? No. I'm willing to pay for anything I get, but not for you. It would rob us of the only thing we have. Belief in each other. Well, I guess that's that. But don't you want to tell me? Might as well. I suppose you'll hear about it eventually. Dad owes Lester Walsh 20000 on a mortgage. On your home? Yes. Uncle Lester threatened to take the house unless Dad covers up some phony work on the new hospital. Well, suppose your dad accepted Walsh's proposition. He wouldn't do that. But if he did, if he allowed himself to be bought, he'd have to face his conscience every day of his life, wouldn't he? Yes. That's what I meant about you and me. There are some things money can't figure in. Well, just get it, huh? Does this end our being friends? No. Not so long as we have a fireplace, Jim, and you want to come to it. four o'clock. Are any of you going to be here for dinner? I don't know, Aunt Addie. Well, I'm not going to waste good food. We may all be baking soon enough. Did you see Manning? Well? He gave me a job. Oh, Ken. On the new building? 
No. There's a window trimmer. What? Oh, you can't do that. The idea of my nephew pinning petticoats on naked female figures. Well, it was the best he had to offer, so I took it. What'd you do, sis? Oh, I saw Jim Martin. You went there to borrow money from him. Carol Sheridan. Yes, but don't worry. He turned me down. I should think he would when you lower yourself. Oh, Ken, forget it. Calling all cars. Calling all cars regarding gas station robbery. Suspect is about 17. He's wearing a white silk handkerchief as a mask, driving a light-colored roadster with a lot of fancy equipment. This is the third gas station he's held up in the last two hours. This time, he used a new shotgun. He is heavily armed. Oh, Larry! A new shotgun. Let's see if he took his gun. Remember what he said, even if he had to go to jail? Oh. Crazy little idiot. Oh, this is going to kill me. They're gone. Oh, it's him. It's him. Come on. Ken, what do we do? Think of father. I'll handle this. You, a window trimmer. <laughs> oh, it's the police. They've got him. I'll go. No, no. Hello, Andy. Say, what do you mean, ringing the doorbell like that? Why, I, I, I come on, Carol. Give me the keys to your car, Sam. My, don't argue, Sam. We'll find him somehow. Who's with me? Your repairs. Uh, what's wrong? Samuel, come in. Come sit down here, Sam. We're nice and comfortable. Thanks. Uh, Samuel, um, how are your finances? Well, if I could get that church job. Well, I'm talking about your finances, not your prospects. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, ma'am. Well, I didn't mean that. I meant your money. Have you a mortgage on that house of yours? Oh, no. It's free and clear. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. <laughs> Big house, isn't it? More than you need. <laughs> it must be awfully lonesome there for you. <laughs> I was just thinking what a nice place we could make of that house of yours. Eddie, you don't mean you're going I to... don't rush me, Sam Townsend. Well, I... Came over me all of a sudden, like. I had always planned to stay here with Thomas. Don't change but... your mind again, Addie. But I guess it's my duty to marry you. <laughs> if it's the family, I'll tell them. You stay right here. I'll go. Come in. Sister Sheridan. Uh, and how is our dear sister on this lovely Sabbath? Oh, uh, you look a trifle heated. Well, I, I have been a little warm, <laughs> Reverend Huxley. Be careful you don't catch cold. There's a lot of sickness going about. Oh. Only today I heard that Mr. Martin's wife had passed on. Jim Martin's wife dead? Yes. Such a sad case. Oh. And such a young woman, too. You must be careful, Sister Sheridan. Uh, uh, try a little aspirin and a cup of tea. The same youthful bandit. This is the sixth gas station he has held up. He used an automatic on this job. You could be playing a hymn. Oh, uh, is this the gentleman with whom I am to discuss the building of the tabernacle? Mr. Townsend. Brother Townsend. How are you, Father? Uh, uh, Parson. I mean Reverend. Uh, won't you be seated? Oh, thank you. Uh, just a minute, sir. Reverend, uh, we're going to have a job for you, too. Addie and I are going to get married. Bless my soul. How delightful. And may I be the first to congratulate you? Thank you. Uh, when will it be? Well, we did want to get married in the new tabernacle that Samuel is going to build for you. Oh, he's an excellent contractor and honest. I'm sure he is if you recommend him, Sister Sheridan. Had you anything in mind about the tabernacle? Well, uh, no. Uh, yes, I... Uh, 
I could show you a first-class high school. Well, I, I mean a design. It must be something magnificent. Uh, something in a grand style, not of the old school. Something with a newer expression. The loftiness of mankind. Something in... Beautiful. It's the very thing. Is this your design? No, no, uh, 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 My partner drew that. Uh, he couldn't have done a better job for you. Look at that beautiful figure. An angel with outspread wings. And what a gorgeous tower. Oh, the very thing for our new set of chimes. I'm glad you like it, Reverend. When can we talk contract? Well, that will be arranged. Uh, but I should enjoy showing these to the vestrymen before the evening service. Oh, of course. Uh, where's your hat? Sam? Yeah, come right along, partner. Yes, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Here are the hospital specifications, Mr. Sheridan. Oh, thanks, Elder. Will you get me Mr. Walsh at his home? Yes, He was last seen going toward the city park. He was still wearing the white silk handkerchief mask and had a rifle, a shotgun, and an automatic. They'll get him any minute now. We might be able to get him off on an insanity charge. Oh, if we only knew where he was. If we only knew what he was doing. 610, 615, 620, 625, 30, 635, 640, 645, 650, Hello, Laura, you've got to get back that money. Hey, what the... We'll get you out of town. We'll get you a lawyer. What's the matter? What are you all talking about? And that money, we know how you got it? Oh, what's the matter with how I got it? I sold my car for 425 and the gun for 120 Then I borrowed 20 bucks from Pete Rogers and 11 from Dago Peretti and four and a half from Tiny Burke and... Oh, six... Larry, you glorious baby. Good boy, good boy. Hey, well, cut it out. I can pay it all back. I got a job. A job? What? Uh -huh. How? Jerking sodas at the Purple Peg. Eighteen bucks a week. Soda jerker. And a window trimmer. My nephews. And you. Don't say it, Aunt Patty. We all tried our best. Well, I, I guess you did. And I'm going to do my part, too. I'm not going to be a burden on Thomas any longer. I'm going to be provided for. Why, Aunt Addie, you've done it, I know. You're going to marry Sam. Well, I saw my duty, and I did it. And Addie's going to get married. Oh, the key the the my fair lady. Oh, kiss the bride. Kiss the bride. Oh, <laughs> that's the wedding be. Hey, What's going on here? What's all this about? I'm so dizzy. And Addie's going to be married. Yeah, she's hooked Sam at last. Oh, <laughs> darn, Sheriff, now stop it. We're going to miss you, sis. But we wish you all the happiness in the world. Oh, I'm, I'm not thinking of happiness. I, I'm just marrying Sam Townsend. It's nothing unusual. It isn't as though it hadn't been anticipated. It, it... I was going to get dinner. <laughs> Gee, Dad, isn't it great? Daddy, I'll get your slippers and your smoking jacket. We just look. Yeah, and then we'll all sit by the fire. Why, aren't any of you going out tonight? Oh, we wouldn't think of it. And what? Did anything happen at the office? Well, your father was terribly worried about something. He kept going over the plans for the new hospital. Then he tried to call Mr. Walsh, and there was no answer. Then he didn't speak to Uncle Lester? No. Oh, that's well. I'm going to get Daddy's things. I'll see if I can help Aunt Daddy. Are you looking for something? Yeah, I was looking for my pipe. Oh, here it is, Dad. <coughs> There's nothing wrong, is there? No, no. No, no. Well, I'm glad of that. Here are your slippers and jacket, Dad. 
Just a minute, dear. I'm glad that just we four are here together because there's something I want to tell you. Don't bother, Dad. We have everything all settled. Yeah. We've been working on that all afternoon. Of course, we won't be able to save the house, but we... Yeah, but here's something we can start on. <clears throat> what is all this about? It's very simple. You see, Aunt Addie told us all about it. And we want you to know that we're with you 100%. You know, Dad, I'm afraid we've been kind of thoughtful. And we haven't considered you very much. But we want you to know that... that you mean more to us than anything else in the world. <clears throat> I guess my pipe's gone out. Now, everything's going to be all right, Dad. Yeah, we're all set. I got an 18 buck a week job at the Purple Pig, jerking sodas. And I'll keep house. <laughs> and I get 25 a week from Manning. Did he accept your design? No, no, not, not, not exactly. He, he gave me a job as a window trimmer. Oh, no, no. Things aren't as bad as that. Now, look here, Dad. Yeah, we're all set, Pop. We'll hey, answer that. We'll answer that. <laughs> Congratulations, Uncle Sam. Yes, sir, you're getting a darn good woman. Well, Addie has told us all about it. All the happiness in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the Captain Apple job? Well, I, yep, I... I landed the Reverend, all right. But I... I had to use false pretenses. You see, I... I, I guess I'll have to do a... Uh, good deal of explaining to you, Ken. What about? Well, you see, they were expecting some sort of a plan for the new tabernacle, and this was laying around loose, and, and uh, Reverend Huxley just naturally took to it. What? What? That isn't a design for a church. I know that, but that angel on there. Angel? That isn't an angel. Well, that's the emblem of art, extending her bounty to commerce. Well, it's an angel of art now extending her bounty to Sam Townsend. That is, if you will come in as my partner and help build the tabernacle. <laughs> what else can I say? <laughs> well, I've always wanted Kim for a partner. I guess I am really in the family now. <laughs> Letter from Mr. Sheridan? You sign for it, Larry. Okay. It's a message for you, Dad. What is it? Well, just a minute. We'll see. It's a relief. A receipt made out to Dad for the full amount in cash by Uncle Lester. Dear Tom, please accept this with my best wishes. It is purely voluntary on my part and in no way is to be construed as having a bearing upon the matter discussed between us. Lester Walsh. Well, that settles everything. I knew Uncle Lester wouldn't go through with it. And you don't know your Uncle Lester. It wouldn't have made any difference to him if it all had to sleep in the park. No, Lester wouldn't change his mind. There were others he had considered. Carol, it wasn't... Does it matter? Let's just say that Lester Walsh did change his mind. We must find out about this. We will. And I know who you mean. Now, folks, go tidy up. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes. Huh? Yes, come along, everyone. This is going to be a real family dinner. It was someone outside the family, wasn't it? Well, he won't be outside the family for long. That is, if I have anything to do with it. What are you going to do? I'm going to call him. Oh, Ken, no! Uh, hello, Mr. Martin. Well, this is Ken Sheridan speaking. Uh, say, uh, I'd appreciate it very much if you'd come over to my house for dinner tonight. <laughs> yes. Well, that is if you'll accept an apology and an invitation from me. Oh, say, uh, my sister is very anxious to have you come, too. <laughs> okay. Thanks. You'll be here in five minutes. I wish you lots of luck, sis. Eleanor! Wait a minute! Wait, where are you going? I'm not going to stay. Well, will you stay if I, if I tell you that I didn't know what I was talking about this afternoon? Then why did you say it? 
Yeah, because I was acting like a big-headed sap. Well, you are. You know you are. What? Oh, big-headed sap. That's right. Come on in here. I want to tell you something. Sit down here, dear. Eleanor, I've decided to take Sam Townsend into partnership with me. No, Aunt Eddie told me. And I've also decided that the first thing a professional man should do is build his own home. Oh, Ken, really? Mm -hmm. Something very simple, of course, but thoroughly modern. Entirely different from this old place. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? A little cottage. About 11 rooms. Wait, I've got a pencil. I'll show you. We have a large living room. And a great big kitchen. Well, dear, you see, the personality of a house is built around its living But I want a place for a nice big automatic icebox. Well, we have that here, see, in the butler's pantry. But if we didn't have a pantry, then we could have twice as big a kitchen. Oh, darling, now, I must insist that, that you see the... Oh, but uh, I don't want a house without a big kitchen. Oh, right. All right. All right, now. <clears throat> see, kitchen. Kitchen. A big kitchen. That's the only answer, Captain. As I told you, this house is everything that I've looked for all my life. I couldn't let you kids lose it, but I couldn't take a place in it the way you offered. Jim, I'm making the same offer now. Because I love you. Are you sure? Just as sure as I've always been. Only I've been afraid to admit it. Carol, I received the news this afternoon, just before you arrived. I'm free now. Oh, Jim, then... Yes. Will you marry me? <clears throat> Do you two care for any dinner? It's ready. Will you allow me to be the judge of how this house should be built? Oh, yes, dear. But we'll need another icebox up there, too, for the baby's milk bottle. Icebox? Icebox? What are we building this house for, an Eskimo? Now, children, you better go into dinner. The nursery will take care of itself. <laughs> All right, Aunt Eddie. What? Well, of all things. Why should I worry? I'm not living here anymore. <laughs>